Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Today we're talking about the office market. We're looking at update. We're looking at forecasts for 2017 and beyond. You know, and one of the ways to invest in the office sector is uh, through office REITs, right, through through the stock market. Well, please welcome my next guest, Stephen Marks. He's Managing Director with Fitch Ratings, and he's joining us on the phone. Uh, Stephen, thanks for being with us. Michael, thank you very much for having me. And I'd like to ask you, uh, Stephen, about office REITs, how they performed and how they're moving forward. But just briefly before we get started, um, you know, investing in the office sector uh, can have some benefits if you're a market investor, right? And then eat, REITs in, in, in particular, you know, they have that dividend, right? That's right. REITs, REITs as, as tradable securities, they, they trade on an exchange, um, no different than any other any other stock, uh, corporate industrial, uh, so on par with IBM and, and other other corporates. Uh, there's upwards of now almost 20 REITs that are in the S&P 500. So there's been much more of a of a market acceptance of of the REIT as in some ways as its own asset class. Right. And let's talk about office REITs. So how have they performed, say, in 2016, uh, office REITs compared to to other REITs, and then maybe to the market in general? Sure. Just just on in terms of overall stock performance. Uh, the the offer suites did did pretty well for o for o sixteen. They uh, were one of the best performing sectors in in the REIT space, upwards of uh, over twenty percent total return. Whereas the overall REIT space was around uh, ten or eleven percent, and and the office REITs return was roughly on par with the broad S and P five hundred. Wow! Wow! That's amazing. So, what do you expect moving forward? Well, what's interesting is that if you looked at a, at the stock diagram of kind of a of an office index uh, for the shares, uh, they were pretty much uh, on par with the broader the broader REIT index for the first nine months of the year. And then uh, post election, uh, the office REITs uh, did, did very well. They, they dramatically outperformed the broader market. And I think part of that is is a perception, or perhaps it's ultimately going to become become a reality that a that that post election there's there's much more uh, confidence, corporate confidence. Increased job growth, uh, it views that there's going to be more job uh, office using employment, which is the ultimate driver for office demand, is office using employment. And so, uh, we expect that 017 will, will be a good year. We think office, relative to all the other asset classes for REITs, will be will be middle to the upper upper part of the pack. Yeah, that's interesting. I think uh, you know, you look at what Trump says he's doing, and I guess what he's already started doing is, you know, reducing regulations. And then if he's able to reduce the corporate tax rate, uh, and corporations have more money, they have less regulation. Then I guess everybody believes that uh, they're going to create more jobs, right? And that really helps the office market. That's right. It's it's a big part of it. It's it's multi pronged uh, view on this, which is which is your right. Uh, reduction in corporate taxes means means. Uh, Corporations will. There's a view that they will they will grow as opposed to dividending out or, or doing uh, share buybacks, and they will actually reinvest in their business, which does mean more jobs. Number one, uh, number two, uh, is to the extent that there is a pullback in regulations, and in, in particular, for instance, in, in New York, where I'm based, there's a view that that if there are reductions in or pullbacks in items such as Dodd Frank or the Volcker Rule, that that the financial institutions and the financial services sector generally, which is the big engine of, of office growth here in New York, will grow uh, much more quickly than it has the last four or five years when, when the regulations really came into effect. And you saw that, that sort of the, the higher paying um, financial services, financial institution job growth um, was not that robust. I think there, there's a view now that, that there could be uh, pretty strong growth uh, here, particularly in New York and some of the larger, the larger um, financial industry markets. Right, and you mentioned Dodd Frank and and potential regulations there softening and making money flow right for commercial real estate. So, how do you really think that's going to happen? And is that uh, a catalyst for the office market to, to improve? I mean, you know, it's like I've talked to you before. We talked about multifamily. There's there's a lot of financing um, from Fannie and Freddie uh, out there, but for office market, you know, some uh, lenders may have been skittish before. May money be easier in 2017? Well, we think, uh, in terms of overall uh, level of, of financing in the office space, probably isn't isn't going to be driven so much by mm-hmm. by views specifically tied to the election. Um, we think it's more going to be driven. In fact, I mean, the, you could look at it on the flip side. I think the the SEC and um, some of the some of the regulatory bodies have come in saying 
or, uh, that regulate the bank saying, saying, hey, you need to look at your uh, lending exposure generally, and in particular your commercial real estate lending uh, exposure specifically. So that is uh, sort of un, you know, not tied at all to, to a Trump presidency, but more so tied to uh, br- sort of broader regulatory uh, themes and where we are in the cycle. So all that is to say that, that we don't expect there to be uh, sort of a, a boom in office lending necessarily. If anything, we think there might be a bit of a pullback. We're seeing more CMBS uh, regulations or new CMBS structures that had to go into effect at the tail end of last year um, that could curtail some some CMBS uh, lending as well. Okay. We're talking with Stephen Marks from Fitch Ratings, and we're talking about the office sector, and we're talking about office REITs. So, Stephen, there's a lot of talk for office users um, using less square footage per employee. You know, people working at home, people having uh, different hours, people sharing desks and things. And so I know a lot of the tenants that, that we represent, you know, they are looking to try to put more people in less space. So how do you look at that as far as the impact on office and office REITs? It, it, we view it definitely, definitely as a negative. Uh, open floor plans, telecommuting, uh, th- things like that uh, are, are going to eat away at overall office demand. And so uh, while there is definitely more of a push with, with millennials and creating more of a, a collaborative workspace, um, so in, in many ways it, it's sort of the, the up-and-coming generation sort of wants this type of environment to work in, something that's warm and, and communal. Um, and it's not people in cubes or in offices. So um, now that could work on the flip side, which is to say that a lot of companies are saying, okay, we will provide these spaces for you. We want, we want everyone to be in the office. We don't want people telecommuting. We want people to have a reason to come in. We want there to, it to be an inviting place for people to work. Um, so it, there's a lot of cross currents in it, uh, sort of a, a push-pull. Um, but we think that it, it, is, it is, all things considered, probably a net negative um, for office demand. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see as companies move forward how that adjusts, especially as there's more competition for, for talent, you know, uh, and if you're a big producer at your company and you're a great employee, um, do you really want to be in a bench with your headset on? <laughs> we'll see <laughs> moving forward and how that impacts productivity and, and health and all the wellness things going on. Well, Stephen, what else might impact office sector and, and office REITs moving forward? Well, one thing that's interesting, and, and this may be more so focused on kind of the, the key, key gateway markets, some of the, the coastal markets, but uh, there's a view that, that uh, the technology sector is slowing down, perhaps, uh, you, know, you know, talk around lower venture, venture capital funding, and we're actually seeing quite the opposite. Um, venture capital funding is up. There, there's, a, there's a big uh, tech IPO in, in the market right now sort of uh, validating the concept that, that technology is certainly not going away. Uh, it's, it's sort of a little-known fact, but, but uh, Google's second largest office concentration is in New York. Um, so some of, the, some of the key gateway coastal markets are, are tech centers, and then when you even go down to some other markets like Austin and the Research Triangle down in Carolina, uh, technology is certainly not going away. Technology, more, probably more so even than financial services or financial institutions are probably going to be the drivers of, of demand going forward. So um, to the extent that, that a given market has, has good or emerging tech exposure, it's probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And it's funny you talk about venture capital and, and watching that and thinking about the future impact on the office market. Very, very good information, Stephen. Thanks for joining us. Certainly. Thank you very much, Michael. And stay tuned. We're going to have more on the office market update and forecast for 2017. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Stay with us. Hey there. Thanks for checking out the Commercial Real Estate Show. Don't miss a video of special interest to you. Be sure to subscribe below. And if you appreciate the videos, be sure and thank our sponsors. There's a link to more information about them in the description. For more videos, podcasts, and articles, check out CREshow.com.